you must have noticed a similar situation in today's first week with last week. Last week we saw the unfair treatment of God who generously paid the same wage to those who came at the eleventh hour, the same amount to those who came early in the morning. And for that, the way of the Lord is said to be unfair, as we saw in today's video. Two things are out here. Why does he treat with death those who study in nation, but eventually fall into iniquity? And why does he grant mercy, hard life to those who change their ways? Returning back to him. The gospel today offers us the answer when Jesus continues to address himself to the religious leaders of his time. The chief priests and the elders of the people were complacent in their own righteousness. They thought they had it all because being the chosen people of God, they thought salvation is already won. And at the same time, they were cynical about conversion and denying the possibility of change for those who may be outside of salvation, perhaps the sinners, especially the tax collectors and prostitutes. That is why Jesus in today's gospel compares these Jewish believers to the second son who initially said yes and then the sinners who initially said no. Let's look at it. The Jewish leaders, they said yes to God when they accepted to be God's chosen people, when they accepted to worship Him, when they accepted to even believe in Him and give all the letters of the Lord, the commandments, the precepts. On the other hand, the sinners, what is that the first time said no to the Lord when they refused to believe, when they refused to worship, and the, when they refused to keep the commandments and rather chose to live in sin. However, something happened here with the coming of John the Baptist and of course the Messiah Christ himself, preaching about repentance and accepting the good news. This was the sinners, tax collectors, and prostitutes. They repented and accepted the way. So the initial no turned into yes. And now the chief priests and the Jewish leaders and the elders, who initially thought because we are God's chosen people, did not continue to say yes to the Lord. Rather, they rejected. Jesus Christ or the God of Jesus Christ whom they have been believing and worshiping. All through the scripture we see violence intensifying through the public ministry of Christ himself. At a point or many occasions they try to kill him, push him off the cliff and plan to execute him. Eventually it happened even though it is a willing option for Christ himself. So, but maybe for the sinners, the tax collectors, the message of conversion, of change, spoke their heart, and they returned to the Lord. And all through the scripture, we find many examples of sinners represented by tax collectors and prostitutes. Think about Matthew, the tax collector himself. He told his his own story in his gospel, Matthew chapter 9, you see that. Or another tax collector that we know very well, Zacchaeus. Matthew 19, 1 to 10. We can also remember John 8, the woman caught in adultery. Or the other woman who uh, anointed the feet of Jesus and cleaned his feet with her. Uh, like, uh, these are examples of those uh, sinners who presented in the scripture. And of course you and I, Paul's letter to the Romans 
says, we all have sinned and we are wanting, we fall short of the glory of the Lord. And so Jesus is using today's reading and preaching to tell the Jewish leaders and Pharisees that change is possible, conversion is possible, and that is what he is inviting you and I. So the message of conversion that change is possible is still relevant in our time today. Why? Because we may also be complacent like the Jewish leaders and scribes. Thinking that my initial yes to Christianity or my being a priest is enough to gain the kingdom of heaven. It is not. Or my being a coming to the church every Sunday is enough. It is not. Or being a lector or even being a deacon or whatever activity or whatever we do in life in the church, these are not enough. Am I still saying yes? every day of my life to the Lord. My baptism, confirmation, giving, ordination, whatever, marriage, is just a commitment. And a commitment requires continual transformation, renewal, to keep saying yes to the Lord. And that is what these Jewish leaders lack. Thinking because we are chosen people, we have no need of continuing to say yes to the Lord. We are invited to this active discipleship, not only to receive the message of salvation, but to put them into practice. It is often said that being and doing goes together. Being a Christian requires walking, living it out. St. James in his letter, chapter 2, he says, our faith must go with good work. It is not enough to believe or to be a Christian. And sometimes it is said, we are not just what we say, but above all, we are what we do. A good example might be very significant here. A story is told of uh, the best man at the wedding who gave admonition to newly wedded couples. He asked them to compare their love to one million dollars. Instead of giving the check of one million, he asked them to get 10 or 20 dollar bills and then to give it to each other every day of their life. That way, they continue to say, I love you, I love you, every day of their life till then do us part. And we have so many images in the scripture that explains our marriage to God, who always invites us into the intimacy of His love, of His relationship. And for every relationship to work so well, we have to continue to stay this, going in abiding love and kindness. So we may also find ourselves into despair of believing that change is not possible. But it is. That is the parable of these two servants who said yes and then relaxed to know. And one who said no and later went on to do the work. And so I invite you to some of the questions on this gospel reading. Do I live in despair for myself and cynicism in others? Do I live in hope? Hope that change is possible? Do I even easily give up on myself? Let us sing and addictions keep me down. Or do I humble the hope that conversion to the Lord is possible? What about concrete steps? to bring change in my life and also in the life of others. For conversion is not only personal, it is also communal. Think about the communal aspect where an example of teachers or professors in schools pull upon having students 
on the first year of school. Some students might be stuffy, ignorant, and stubborn. But I mean, by the time students go through the years of formation in school, they are gradually becoming presentable, knowledgeable, and even humble and handsome and beautiful students. That's a communal aspect of teachers and professors helping that change is possible. We can also look into our families Sometimes we have black sheep in the families, my own family inclusive, an uncle, a niece, a wife, a husband, a sibling. I also have such a person in my own family, my immediate brother. What you can say, a black sheep in the family, we've done all we could to help. But it doesn't stop us from being part of his life. The communal aspect that change is possible. Do you have such a person in your family? And when was the last time you called them on for? Or oh, I can send them a text message. Or even a car on their birthday. But outside of the communal aspect of conversion that change is possible, the most important is the personal aspect. But it is only when I get myself in honor that I can go out there to help others. Upon conscious self-examination, is there something in my past or even right now that is turning my yes, my initial yes, into no? Is there any way that have damaged the life of others. The Lord is inviting me to his forgiveness that change is possible. He has given us his grace in Christ Jesus. Paul tells us in his letter, 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9, the grace of God is enough, is sufficient for every one of us. There is no sin beyond God's pattern. Think of St. Augustine, how far he went searching for happiness. And upon recognizing and realizing the mercy, the love of God, his initial no turned to yes. The prophecy of Isaiah chapter 1, 18 tells us, Come to me, even though your sins are like scarlet. They will be white as wool, even if they are as red as crimson. They will be made white as wool. So, my brothers and sisters, as we continue our linguistic celebration, let us call to mind that no sin is beyond God's forgiveness. In humility, He asks us in the second day of today to help the self attitude, the self mind of Christ who humbled himself to obey the will of God. Some fifth ones that tells us always, a humble, contrite heart, the Lord does not spawn. In that humility and confidence, we are approaching the throne of grace, that we may find strength and power at the time we need it. In these words of the scripture, there are a fullness and richness find a home in our hearts for Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.